the rupture is 7.5 times the square root of F prime C. In this case, F prime C is given to be 4,000. You substitute in the equation. Uh, by the way, guys, I think there is, a, there is an issue here. I, want, I need everybody's attention. This is 4,000, not 4,000 times 0.5. That's 4,000 to, uh, to the power of 0.5. Would you do me a favor and, and uh, correct that? Yeah. So it's FR. The, 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 the value is correct. It's just the equation. So it's 7.5 times the square root of 4,000. Please make a note of that. Yeah, and Donald says uh, see the equation on page 12. All right? Uh, so when we do this, substitute all of this, um, the, the cracking moment comes out to be 25.6 foot kips. Does everybody follow? This is a very real, realistic uh, problem. So, uh, and, and um, uh, Fahmy, uh, Amjad asked me, where do you get the 9, 9 inch? 9 inch, uh, Fahmy, that's a, uh, it's this distance. It is the distance from the centroid to the tension side, which is, 18 divided by 2, all right? So when you find the, ca the cracking moment, this is the equation. And also, when you're ca this is very important. Make a note to yourself. When you're calculating the, the cracking moment, you must use the gross moment of inertia. Use the entire section, all right? And use the entire depth, in this case, 18 inches. All right? Very good. Let's move on. We have a lot more exciting things to cover. Now, I hope that you're having fun. Uh, here, um, Ryan says, so this beam will not crack uh, as long as the stress is less than uh, the, the cracking stress. Absolutely, yes. Um, but once the, the stress reaches the cracking stress, then the first uh, stress, uh, the first crack will will occur. All right. But you're correct in in what you said. All right. Now, um, you know, we always talk about reinforced concrete. When we say reinforced concrete, what we're talking about is that we have a section of concrete and we reinforce it with steel. Now, why do we do that? We do it for, for the following reason. Think about it. Concrete is a very, very strong material in compression. All right? When concrete is placed in compression, it can withstand large stresses and carry large loads. But concrete is rather, rather weak in tension. Now, when we talk about steel, steel is the opposite. Steel is very, very strong in tension, however, not so strong in compression. So what we do, we combine these two uh, positive properties. So when we combine steel with concrete, it's the marriage of two materials that we get high compression resistance from the concrete part, and then we get high tension resistance from the steel that we use as reinforcing. However, and guys, please pay attention to the next thing I'm telling you. For that steel to really be helpful to us, we need to place it, where do you think? You got it, on the tension side of the concrete. All right, so here's what we need to do. We need to look at the, uh, the, the beam, you look at the dimension, and you decide where is top or bottom, right or left, which section of this concrete element is going to be in tension, and that is where you need to place the steel. This concept that I just told you is tested on the exam over and over again. And Specifically, I will tell you, uh, in a little bit, I will tell you how they test 
that knowledge on the test. All right? But this, what I just told you is very important. Now, this reinforcing bars, the reinforcing bars uh, come in different sizes. And there are tables. I don't have a table included in the handout here. But there are tables that you can actually refer to. And uh, different size reinforcing bars are identified by their sizes. All right, and they, they just designate a number. For example, number three. Number three is, uh, is uh, the smaller uh, bar, the smallest bar that we use here in, in this country. And it goes all the way to number 18. Now, there may be special occasions where you have used, some of you who are structural engineers may have used some size outside of this. But the standard size uh, reinforcing bars uh, are number three all the way to number 18. All right, so we designate them by numbers. Now, in the calculations that we are doing, the kind of calculation we are doing today, we need to know the diameter. We need to know the area of each bar. And as a rule, up to number 8, the bar diameter is in eighths. What that means is, for example, a number 8 bar has what bar diameter? 8 times 1 eighth. So you're right. The diameter of a number 8 bar is 1 inch. All right? Uh, numbers. 7 bar, it had the, the diameter would be 7 eighths, and so on. Now, also, just for your information, I, I recommend you use a table for this, but the area of a number 9 is equal to a corresponding square of 1 by 1. Number 9 has an area that's equal to a square of 1 by 1. So what's the, the area of a number 9 bar? 1 square inch. All right? And number 10 corresponds, the, the area of a number 10 corresponds to uh, area of a 1 and 1 eighth square. And uh, number 11 has this uh, correspondence. All right? Um, I want everybody to do this problem with me, please. This is also very important. So um, if you go back to your notes, the third item that I said that you need to learn is nominal moment. What I said was nominal moment. And here I'm going to show you how to calculate the nominal moment for a uh, given concrete cross section. All right? Um, you, you know, even though we call this structural design, but on the test, it will be very difficult for them to give you a true design problem. Those of you who are structural designers, you do agree with me that design is an open-ended problem. And it has multiple correct uh, answers. However, on the test, because the nature of the exam is multiple choice, they cannot give you a true design problem. So what they will give you is the kind of problems we're doing here. It's, it's design in the context of analysis. All right? So you, it's a design concept, but in order for it to have one single answer, it's really the analysis part of a design process. So uh, here, uh, we, are, we are asked to find the nominal moment. And let's do it. It's not a difficult concept. It may take me a few minutes to go through these um, uh, preliminaries. But everything I say is important and will contribute to uh, what you need to do to get the answer. But uh, hopefully, when it's done, you will agree with me it's not a very difficult concept. All right, so let's say that uh, you're given this cross-section with the dimensions that are given here on the left-hand side. And please note that they say these, oh, by the way, these round things here, those are the reinforcing bars. 
These are the reinforcing bars. And in this case, we are assuming that the tension is at the bottom. Don't always assume that the tension is in the bottom. In this case, uh, we are saying that the tension is in the bottom. And uh, we have used three reinforcing bars. Each one is a number nine. And if you go back to the previous slide, I showed you number nine. The cross-section of a number nine is one square inch. Therefore, the total area of the steel, A sub S, A sub S, the total area of the steel is um, three square inches. I hope that you understand that, because this shows up in, in several of the problems we'll be doing today. All right, let's see what we are given. Let's go back to the top of this problem. This says Fy is 60,000 PSI. Please make a note of that. That is the yield stress of the steel, all right? When they say Fy, that's the yield stress of the steel that's used in this section. So that's 60,000 PSI. And then the compressive strength of the concrete is given to be 3,000 PSI. F prime C is 3,000 PSI. All right, now, what you see here at the right-hand side Learn it, because for problems like this, the first thing you need to do is sketch that, all right? And basically, that is the, the stress distribution on this concrete beam. And what I want you to, to learn here is that Every time you, you, you have a problem like this, just draw this line, the, the line as depicted. This is going to be, let me, let me try to use a red line. OK. We're going to draw this line. This is what you have to do, all right? But please note, this line does not go all the way to the bottom. This is a very important concept. This line goes from the top to where the steel is located. All right? The next thing you need to do is to draw these arrows here. That is on the compression side. All right? That's on the compression side. And each, those are stresses. And that stress is equal to always, always, always is equal to 0.85 times F prime C. So this is always what I want you to do is the first thing that you do. You draw that thick red line, stop at the center, of, center line of where the steel is located. The next thing I want you to do is draw these stresses here. All right? And we are showing it. Um, acting or pushing on the cross section because those are in, that's in compression. All right. Now each one of them, these stress lines is the magnitude is 0.85 times F prime C. 0.85 times F prime C. All right. Now the other thing I want you to do is identify this dimension as small a, lowercase a. Now, so far, so good. The next thing I want you to do, and I will mention one other thing, and then we're going to move to the next slide. The next thing I want you to do is to identify the maximum force. These are forces, not stress, but forces. The top force is a compressive force acting on the con uh, concrete section. The bottom is labeled T, all right, T, which is for tension. And that's the force in the steel. All right, now, let's take a look. What I want you to concentrate on is this segment C. All right, this part C, assume the variations. Now, 
I'm going to do this rather quickly, so I need your attention, please. 